The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar, Proactive Monitoring, Playing Offense for the Win, sponsored by Loom Systems. We have a really great webinar on tap today, and uh, I know it's one that everybody will get a lot out of it. But before we get things kicked off, I would like to go over just a few housekeeping items. First of all, today's webinar will be recorded. So if you miss any or all of the webinars, please know that you will be able to listen to it on demand probably in about 24 hours or so. So um, there is that. And then also we will be taking uh, audience questions throughout. So if you uh, have a question for our panelists today, um, feel free to, uh, to submit your questions using that control panel on your screen. And then we'll take about 15 minutes before the end of the webinar and we'll go through these audience questions. Okay, with that, I would like to introduce today's speaker, Dror Mann, who is co-founder and vice president of product for Loom Systems. Welcome, Dror, how are you? Great, Charlene, thanks for hosting us. Great, great, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it over to you and let you do your thing. Super, sounds great. Hi, guys, and thanks for being here today, or postponing the lunch for us. Um, my name is Dror. I'm leading the product development at Loom. Uh, I want to say a few words about the, my background, and then we're going to have a beautiful agenda for this talk. So um, that's me. So Loom, I was uh, the head of product of Voyager Labs, um, where we build social network analysis platform to uh, extract insights from social media. Uh, we dealt a lot with graph databases, big data technologies, and uh, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, and back in the days, I was basically a data nerd, like all of us in Loom. Um, we came from a background of intelligence, and we've been developing technologies that um, allowed us to distill insights uh, from big data, especially in places where there's not enough manpower. So uh, this was always our goal, including today, actually, where we focus on harnessing technology for the sake of intelligence rather than for information. Um, so today we're going to talk on, we're going to look on the world through these uh, uh, intelligent glasses. Uh, so for the agenda, we're going to talk about the digital era very briefly uh, and the new DevOps, TechOps challenges. Uh, we'll discuss how monitoring is being done today and then see what can we expect from AI in this domain. Um, last, we're going, to, we're going to have a live demo to see AI in action and I'm going to leave enough time for Q&A and also some polls along the way. So stay tuned, it's going to be great. So let's get going. So guys, uh, let's talk about the reality today. As you all know, in today's digital era, most businesses are digital or in a digital transformation, which means that the physical business has been replaced by systems. And that means more work for us as DevOps, DevOps people. Now people see applications or websites and think, how simple are they? But we all know that things that look very nice and simple, are actually the hardest to do. In fact, there's so much complexity and, and, and technologies under the hood that make these things look simple. So in the new reality, the developers are faster and more agile, but the burden has been shifted to operation, which means uh, first managing and monitoring is the new weakest link. And also it's very hard to prevent failures. So most of us just focus on detecting and resolving as fast as possible. Uh, and here's a cool fact. Most of our audience actually agree with the later statement, statement. As you can see here, if you remember in our previous DevOps.com webinar, uh, applying AI to root cause analysis, we asked you to uh, rank the main purpose if implementing an AI log analysis solution. And the results were significantly skewed towards proactive detection of issues. And this makes perfect sense to us since uh, um, we believe that Current monitoring approaches are focused on defense rather than offense. Um, let me give you an example. The common monitoring scenario we usually see is based on defining thresholds and relevant metrics, say uh, CPU, memory, even business KPIs. And when these are crossed, you use you look for the root cause by analyzing logs, whether uh, uh, manually or with a log management tool like like Ibana, for instance, or Splunk or any other tool. But what's wrong with that? So 
here are main problems we have with this approach, and we see them a lot. First, when your monitoring approach is based on thresholds, it usually means that you detect issues after they happen or, or when it's almost too late. Now, we all know the fine balance between alert fatigue and being paged in the middle of the night. And this is actually, uh, you should check out the amazing hashtag on call selfie if you feel all alone when paged late at night, because I visit there a lot. And the second point is that the second problem is actually the fact that deciding about the interesting metrics to monitor, uh, extracting them from the data and maintaining their threshold takes time and demands an ongoing effort. Uh, third, we all use metrics, of course, for monitoring and happy about it, but many times they just tell you part of the story. So I like to think of metrics as the thermometer that tells you you have, you have a fever. But if you want to know what to do about it, you'll probably go to the doctor. He will listen to your full story and diagnose that you have a flu. And here's a prescription. So if metrics are the thermometer, then logs are the full story. And you need to monitor these on an ongoing basis. Uh, and last, and this is very important, the traditional monitoring consists of monitoring the things you know of based on, on, on your past experiences or best practices. However, we found out that more often than not, performance issues or even severe production issues that happen for the first time are unknown to the user. So they can be treated as black swans, but in reality, they are very, very common. So let me ask you, what if there's a better way? How can we harness AI for becoming proactive about our customers' problems? So let's look on humans versus bots. As of today, humans are better at uh, top-down or open-ended questions, such as, where should I open my next branch? Or, I don't know, any uh, contextual thinking approach. And there's a big but here, because they don't scale, and they're also hungry, get tired, and so on and so forth. Machines, on the other way, are superior in rigorous and exhausting tasks, such as keeping track on our sales in every state, um, sliced by affiliate, let me know if something happens. And so they're good at pattern recognition, following a, a strict methodology, and in places where there's uh, large dimensionality. Now, we, wanted to, we at Loom wanted to build a software that takes advantage of both worlds. So we came up with the following list of requirements. A, we need our AI to help us become proactive, even predictive if possible. That goes without saying, right? B, we'd like it to monitor everything and to detect both knowns and unknowns. And C, the, 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 the software should also consume logs so it could come up with better answers to problems while doing it in, in, in an automated fashion because we don't have time. Does it sound hard? You bet it is. I mean, that's the hardest challenge of all. But let me first, before showing you how it actually works, let me first address your skepticism. So who here believed that self-driving cars will be successful after seeing Total Recall movie back in 1990? And surprisingly, this book was released 50 years ago. And, and you know, science fiction sometimes takes too long to become reality. But if AI has matured enough to drive your car, and you can see these cars driving in Palo Alto and, and that area, it can probably also help with your IT, right? And in fact, we've been working very hard in the last 2.5 years um, to bring this into reality, and, and what you're about to see is already deployed in dozens of customers worldwide. And with that in mind, I'd like you to meet Sophie. Sophie, she's our AI team member, has four main components, or four main capabilities, I would say. First, it allows collection, collecting the data and parsing it automatically. B, proactive detection, learning your baselines of your data to detect issues proactively. C, correlation and tracing, correlating the incident and other incident and tracing the root cause out of these uh, uh, holistic incidents. And last, insight and recommendation. 
So translating the problematic log line into plain English instead of you trying to look for the answer yourself. So in our previous webinar, if you recall, we talked about the different stages of analysis and I show you examples of each one of these phases, but this time I'd like to drill down uh, on the prediction part of SOFI, the second capability, because that's the topic of this webinar. So let's talk about three types of interesting predictions that SOFI can help you with. Behavioral, probabilistic, and semantic predictions. Behavioral prediction is pretty straightforward, right? Here, the, the red arrow here represents the time you would be alerted on an issue using a traditional monitoring system with thresholds in place. So when a threshold is crossed, you get an alert. Easy, right? But a behavioral prediction will perform a vector analysis of the signal and will incorporate also the speed of change. So when these will reach uh, a calculated trend score, you will be notified to check that service. We call that prediction behavioral prediction. The other type of prediction is probabilistic prediction, uh, which, takes in, which, which actually takes into account also the historical behavior of a signal and, and performs the extrapolation to predict an issue. So let's say that's your signal, right? And it looks like uh, uh, a normal periodic behavior. But if there is a change in the pattern, like here, you would like to get notified as soon as possible around that area of time where the blue uh, arrow represents. So that's what we call probabilistic prediction based on extrapolation of data. And last, and more cool stuff to me, is, is the follow example that we call this semantic predictions. So sense logs tell you a rich story and sense logs are written in a human-like language. I say like because, well, it's supposed to be human language, but many developers uh, wrote their own uh, log lines and sometimes it's really hard to know what to do about these. But anyway, since they're written in a human-like language, Sophie can predict issues using semantic analysis of the text. So semantic predictions are really useful on both data and metadata. So here are two examples that I brought. Uh, the first one, you're gonna see it live in a second, uh, is actually an event log from Microsoft that tells you that the certificate is about to expire or already expired. Now, when you read this event as a human being, you know that something is about to take place and so our AI also know how to infer that from the text itself. The metadata example is actually based on analysis of properties or attributes uh, which might suggest that something bad is about to happen. In this case, there is a sudden increase in warnings uh, in your application, in the same app, which require your attention. So Sophie will trigger uh, uh, what we call a predictive incident. So these are the three types of predictions that exist in, the, in, the, in, our, in our solution. And I really want to move to the live demo, live demo part. But uh, before that, we have a poll for you guys. Charlene, can you launch the poll? Okay, great. So we've got the poll up, poll question up, and the question is, which of the following IT layers, in your opinion, requires proactive monitoring the most? We've got applications, we've got middleware and databases, virtualization or infrastructure, such as network storage servers, et cetera. Go ahead and submit your answers, and we'll give it about, oh, 10 seconds more. And while we're waiting for you guys to put your question, your answers in, I would like to remind you that we are taking questions during the webinar. So if you have a question for Dor at any time during the webinar, please feel free to um, submit your question using the control panel. And uh, we'll take about 15 minutes at the end of the webinar and go through those questions. Okay, it's uh, we'll go ahead and close the poll out now and take a look at the results. And wow, looks like infrastructure won out there. Phil, full 50% on the, uh, that's what requires the proactive monitoring the most. Drawer, is that something that, that you're hearing, um, you know, when you're out and about talking to customers or are they, you know, are they maybe looking more at applications or even virtualization for proactive monitoring? 
Charlene, I'm afraid I can't see the results. So is it infrastructure or applications? Uh, it looks like infrastructure um, was the clear winner at 50%. The, the second, um, second uh, most popular was applications for proactive monitoring, cool. followed by middleware and databases at 8%, and then virtualization at 3%. So great, looks, great. Looks yeah. like the uh, the hardware is winning out over the software. Super. All right, cool. So that makes sense. Uh, 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 we found out that so because infrastructure is usually uh, better instrumented in that they have better metrics to monitor over time, and when the infrastructure actually have problems, so usually the applications on top of it suffers gravely from that fact. I find it very, very. Uh, 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 it, it totally makes sense to us. However, we also have lots of different customers that really focus on the business apps running on these infrastructure, and they're trying to become proactive about their business because when, when something is not working the app level, of course, that's where you're losing money as well. So the cool thing about Sophie, our AI solution, is that you don't have to choose which logs would you like to monitor with it. So you can stream uh, both application layer logs, um, your homegrown app or third-party app, or even all across your middleware, down to the infrastructure, you can send us storage logs, also network logs, and system, and so on and so forth. So using the correlation mechanism that we offer, and we're gonna show you an example in a minute, you can trace, deep trace issues from the infrastructure to the application, and find the root cause in the same incident. So thanks for sharing these results, guys. I found it really, really interesting. And uh, I'd like to share my screen back to you and go back to a live demo. Oh, I think that's where the, everything is really becomes more interesting. So let me just share back my screen, guys. All right. You should see now Loom dashboard. Um, and welcome to, welcome to Sophie UI. All right. Um, that's the that's one of the less, latest uh, screens that we released. We call this uh, 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 the unified dashboard screen. Uh, this is where you can see the overall health score of your organization on the left side, the active incidents grouped by application, the data and error volume, and other important metrics that we gather, like mean time to resolution, uh, how many open incidents, and so on and so forth. And of course. Every widget here is interactive and redirects you to the relevant screen behind it. Uh, but I don't want to talk about the whole breadth of the system. I want to focus on the prediction part and the proactive monitoring part because that's the topic today. So we're going to focus on the latest capability we introduced to our beta users. Uh, we call it prediction, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, so as you can see here on the left, uh, on the left side of the screen, you can filter diff the different incidents based on their severity. But if you look here on the, on the uh, bottom of the list, there's a section called prediction. So clicking on that, on that button will redirect you to the relevant incident in the alert screen. And here they are, these two predictions. But before explaining what you're seeing here, let me show you, uh, let me say a few words about that screen in general. So um, that, the incident screen, one of the main screen in Loom. Um, on the left, you have the inbox of events. You see the details of each incident in the middle. Feedback buttons for our machine learning part in the top right side, and insight in plain English on the right side of the screen. So now, let's focus on the first example. That's the prediction part, right? So the first prediction that we see here is from an application called Certificate Services Client. So it's kind of that one of the services that's responsible for auto enrollment. And we can see here a semantic prediction. It's an example of a correlation of two different alerts. The first one is an anomaly in the overall number of warnings. That's your data. That's the spike here. And the second one is a certificate expiration anomaly, which is based on the text itself, like I've shown you before on the, on the deck. So Loom is able to detect these two types of these two types of anomalies and correlate them based on their time and also the fact that they share 
some similarity of, of the metadata. So for instance, you can see that both came from the same component, which is highlighted here in blue, and also at the same time. So Loom told you that, hey guys, you know, you should consume that as one holistic incident. And these are things that are about to happen. And of course, you can drill down deeper. You can click on each one of these to find which servers were affected from this. And you can all, you see these two servers, SQL Server 1 and TIO 12-NAT0. These are the servers that were affected by this. And also, and if you look on the right side of your screen, you can see our insights and recommendations. These are based on, 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 a, on a thing we call TRICVI, which stands for Tribal Knowledge Base. It's an aggregation of insights as they are generated by our users, moderated by our team of data scientists, and redistributed back to all of our customers. So if you, instead of understanding what does that certificate mean, you can see an explanation in plain English on the right side telling you that the certificate on your SQL server is about to expire, uh, that will block the service, an explanation what the certificate, and also some action items, what you should do in order to fix that issue. So that was the first type of prediction, and predictions are always marked with an orb uh, sign icon on the top left side. The other type of prediction I want to, want to talk about is, like, let me click on that, it's a SQL uh, prediction. It's, we call it, uh, that's a, uh, an example of uh, a behavioral prediction. So in this case, we see here a, a SQL server that it's IO requests taking longer and longer. And as you can see in the graph here, these are its IO requests and they, were, they reached a specific uh, score that based on that, Loom decided that, you, uh, that it should consume that now instead of waiting for things to break. And this is based on the numerical value of the IO request that you can see here. So instead of you need to define the threshold on a specific, uh, uh, on a specific number, Loom can learn what is your baseline routine and by comparing it to, uh, by looking on the factor uh, and the pace of change, we'll be able to tell you, hey guys, you should consume this now instead of waiting for things to break in your infrastructure or your middleware in this case. And again, of course, um, each incident is enriched with its relevant insight based on our tribal knowledge base. In this case, tell you exactly what's going on here and it represents a serious performance problem um, and there are two ways to approach this problem. You can either reduce an I.O. or do other things, just follow these instructions. And let me show you something really cool about these incidents. So if, let's say, you have your own insight and you want to, you want to, you know that, uh, well, you're monitoring your own homegrown application, and in this case, we don't have any insights to share with you. So you as a user can always add your own insight to the list. So let's say you're clicking on the green button here, the software will ask you two straightforward questions. What's the problem and how would you solve it? Now, it will recommend about previous resolutions for that, or it will allow you to, as you can see here, or it will allow you to add your own insight recommendations to the list. So when you add your own insight, Sophie learns from your experience about you, how you resolve the issue and save it in your organization for future reference. So over time, you're building actually a, um, um, a body of knowledge which is ever growing and integrated into the workflow of your users. So uh, your level one can be um, less dependent on level two and level three and level four after adding more and more insights. And these insights are accumulated by all of our customers. And so we have a, a, a crowdsource mechanism to learn from their experiences and share it with other customers all over the world. Uh, so that's the insight part. Let me, sh let me show you another type of incident, another type of prediction. Uh, it's less about behavioral or, or probabilistic, but more about detecting the unknown. Let me go back to the main system screen and launch this product tool with you guys. I'm looking for an incident. This is, this, this is the incident. All right, cool. So this is uh, uh, an incident from a Hive application. Um, I want, to sh I want to share with you uh, what's interesting in this, in this case. You remember that we talked about uh, knowing the unknowns? So here is an example of, 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 of an unknown. So it's a correlation of three different anomalies, all from the same host. That's the host in blue here. And two of these anomalies 
are due to spikes in the, in the behavior of this log pattern that you can read here. Um, but the top alert is more interesting because it's actually an alert which we call a new behavior on the right, right side. That's why it doesn't have a graph because it's the first time that Loom uh, detects this pattern. And a new behavior will be triggered at every time so if we detect an unknown pattern in the data. So first, after logs have been received by the software, we, we build their patterns, we model your behavior. But then if something behaves in an abnormal manner, if something behaves for the first time, we will tell you that something is, is, is appearing for the first time ever. And this is the unknowns, unknowns uh, notion of, 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 of event. So you should go and see what's going on, what's, what's wrong with the background we try gave up or the Apache curator and so on. So what's that message? It, Loom tell you what's that, but it's the first time it, sees, it appears in your data. So if you listen carefully to what we have to say for you, you'll be able to avoid uh, uh, future problems. Um, so this will make sure you're actually covered when you don't know what to monitor. And if you're interested in drill down to the log level, uh, you can always click on the search log icon here. And clicking on it, will take you to our log management console. This is a console that we built on the, on the capability of Elastic. And this is where you can search your logs and do some slicing and dicing. And we'll focus, we'll take you to the relevant log line filtered by the relevant service in the specific time frame. But you can actually slice and dice the data from that point onward, just the way you used to do today. So the way you want to use the software is first listen to incidents that it generates automatically without defining any threshold. And when interesting findings are triggered, you can always see what do they mean, drill down deeper to the relevant uh, component or server. And if you want to have some more control and you have want to drill down even deeper, clicking on the search log button will take you to the search to the analytics stream where you can do all the searches. So that's the way you want to use uh, um, our solution. Now, last thing I want to share with you in this demo is the feedback button. Let me find an example. Go back to any type of an example. Let's take, I have here some uh, VMware issue, okay? Here's the ESXi anomaly where your overall number of keywords failed is increasing significantly. So I want, to, I want you to look on the top right side. These action buttons are actually unique because uh, they, tune back the machine learning component of our software. So let's say you as the user decide that you don't want to get notified about these type of issues. So you can tell Sophie to mute these, whether temporarily or forever. And by, by clicking on mute, you actually instruct her not to uh, not notify you again on these type of issues. Because sometimes these logs are not interesting for you as a user. That's one type of feedback loop. The other type of feedback is the raise button. The raise button is like saying, I want you to be less sensitive. So I, do, I, I am interested in looking on these anomalies, but I want to look on them only if their uh, behavior is much more volatile or only if the volume is higher. So it tunes back the, the invisible thresholds behind the scene to make sure you only get notified about the things you would want to get notified. So that's uh, the things I'd like to share with you, going back to the dashboard, we talked about the way we organize the data, the way we show different anomalies, and how you can focus specifically on predictions that you'll find out that you should look for. And um, I think these type, of, these type of capabilities actually uh, change the way you monitor your digital business, because it allows you to become uh, proactive about your customers' problems, and it changed from the ground up the way you used to do uh, monitoring today. So uh, I'd like to wrap up by explaining the way we see the future of monitoring. So I'd like to go back to my slide. Sorry, let me try this. All right, I'll wait a few seconds for everyone to see it. So this is how we see the future monitoring. So in the past, or even the current set of things, IT and ops team use dashboards to, 
to monitor their business. But true scale is almost impossible to do with humans, um, with humans only, sorry. So we have to use machines to fight machines. And that's exactly where AI can help us. So in the new reality, AI will do the monitoring for opt-in so they can focus on triage before any impact of their business. And that's, uh, that's the kind of the direction that we want to take our users to. That's the next decade tools that are going to help you. And over time, once added also a layer of, of order remediation and automation, we can talk about a different concepts. But for now, we should uh, stop and, and, and appreciate the capabilities that we just, uh, uh, we, that we, that are now matured. So uh, I'd like to wrap up this phase and thank you for listening up until now. Um, we really encourage you to take us for a ride. And if you're interested in free trial, just drop us a note and we'll take it from here. Um, <coughs> I'd like to thank you again and I'd like to move, to the, uh, move forward to our Q&A session. Great, all right, thank you, Dror. Um, if you guys have a question for Dror, please feel free to submit your questions using the control panel. We've gotten a couple really great questions in already, so we'll go ahead and jump into those, but uh, just realize it's not too late if you do have a question for Dror. Okay, so, uh, the first question is, uh, how easy is it to install your system? And then how easy is it to add a source? All right, great question. So Loom, deploy, Loom can be deployed both on-premise or SaaS. So we can provide you with a virtual machine to deploy it on your premises with all the components inside of it, or we can deploy an instance or on Azure or AWS. So you can just ship data into our software remotely. And it's very easy to add new sources. Actually, let me share it again with you, since we have some more time, which is great. Um, let me. Sorry, you should see it now. So back to, yep. back to the software. Uh, if I, when, when, when Loom is installed, that you, go, you have this screen of the data sources screen. You click on the connect a new data source button and we'll provide with a list of supported inputs that it has. So you can ship data uh, using, a, let's say you can, you can read data directly from the source of it. Let's say it's a Linux server uh, with the RT slot configuration or it's a Windows server, we can provide you with an agent to do so. We can collect data from your databases, Oracle, SQL, uh, and we also can connect your data from your log management tools. So if you have already embedded some kind of a log management, whether it's Logstash, Log Entry, Sumo, or Splunk, we have plugins to take the data from these uh, systems and use Loom as the intelligence layer on top of them. And it's a very uh, 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 easy process. Let me give you an example. If it's a Linux server and you want to ship data from that server, you just, uh, there's two ways of doing it. You can, we, we, we can help you, uh, there's a script that we can help you run that discover all the logs on a specific server uh, and throw them uh, into Loom. That's the easiest way. But if you do it manually, you just choose your uh, OS, you put your, ver your RCS log version here, you click the next button, you choose which logs would you like to stream, where the system logs and also application logs. If so, you tell us where to read these logs from. You download the predefined configuration file. You restart the RCS log service, and that's it. Logs will be shipped successfully from your server to Loombax. So seven clicks away process, very, very easy to get going. In fact, we're quite proud of saying that uh, in, the, in most of our evaluation or POC period, the customer sees value after the first 90 minutes. Nine zero, right? So hour and a half for the first incident to pour into your software. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, we got a great question here from Abe who asks, uh, can Loom predict insider threats weeks before they happen? Sorry, can you repeat that, Charlene? Sure, sure. Um, the question is, can Loom predict insider threats weeks before they happen? All right, cool. So um, let me say a few words about uh, insider threats and, and cyber specifically. Um, 
Loom was not designed to be a security tool initially. We haven't we started by focusing on IT operations. However, after we started working with uh, bigger enterprises, uh, many CIOs and CISOs came to us and say, hey guys, you know, can, can I just shift my, my security logs as well and events to you so we can have a convergence of IT and security all in one place? And we said, yeah, of course. I mean, Loom is source agnostic. It can, it can ingest logs and highlight anomalies. But it, uh, so you can use it definitely as some kind of a proactive SIM tool and use the prediction to predict events based on what's written in the events themselves. So to answer the question, it will able, it, it can predict, uh, uh, it might able to predict threats if the logs contain information about the threat. So an increase of appearances of a log line or understanding specific keywords within the logs is what we're doing. What we're not doing is it, we do not have a, a specific layer of of, of algorithms that were tailored to detect insider threats. So it really depends on which type of data that you have, and I'm more than willing to give it a try. And you can contact us uh, and show us. It, we can we can we need to talk about the data stores that we can ingest, and then we can give you a better answer for that. But generally speaking, it can definitely analyze security events, and it has some meaningful. Uh, we we we've had some really successful. Uh, um, work with customers that set up security data, but it's, it's not that I can tell you that we get able to detect a level of movement and so on and so forth. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, okay, all right, great. I'm sure if you didn't, they'll be calling, they'll be sending another message, so. <laughs> um, next question, how useful can, it, can the system be in the first months of use if there's not a knowledge base to provide recommendations? So, uh, so is it a question? Is after the first month, if I don't have any, uh, if I don't have any recommendations, how can I use the software? It, it's um, well, I guess they're they're asking about historical data. Um, if you know when the system first starts up, it's obviously not going to have uh, that knowledge base to draw upon. So they're asking, you know, how how useful oh, okay. could it be? Yeah. Oh, of course, got it. So. Um, the insights and recommendation part is relevant for third parties applications and for your own homegrown app as long as you add your own insights, of course, because we don't share information across different customers if it's their own grown application. However, the fact that Loom can detect anomalies based on the behavior of the data without any configurations on the customer side coupled with the fact that we offer you, uh, we, we offer the correlation engine and the drill down capabilities is by itself enough. Uh, you'll, you'll see the value very, very fast, even if there's no recommendation at all. And we have many customers that send us data from the metrics, not from logs. So in, in these metrics, usually you cannot provide the recommendation just on the metric behavior. And they see the value just by using the anomaly detection tool, the correlation mechanism, and the root cause capabilities. So it will be relevant. It will, it will be definitely relevant on the first month, even if it doesn't have any recommendation. All right, great. Um, our next question. Um, uh, let's see. How does it look like when implementing new custom checks? Would the AI logic apply to those self-made checks? All right, great question, guys. So. Um, <laughs> What you see now in, in the version that is out there in the market called Loom 2.1, uh, and the next version 2.2, uh, which is, will be released next month, um, first to our beta users and then GA, uh, we also incorporated the option to, uh, to add custom alerts based on the users. Because many customers came to us and say, hey guys, you know, we love the AI part, we love to be proactive and everything, the things that I don't know of, that's great. But I do also have a long list of checks and, and threshold of lo around logs that I want to add to Loom. And until now, this was not something that we supported because we thought, A, other companies also offer that. But in order to give you a full uh, uh, solution and also to address these concerns, we also added the option to add your own manual alert. And the, the really great part of that is after you add your own manual alert, Loom is treating them as another source of signal. So, Every time there is a check or alert that 
were triggered by these custom alert attacks. Loom is also looking for correlations with other things that happen. So uh, you won't be, uh, you, you can actually get more value by adding your own threshold coupled with the automated incident that Loom is able to detect. Um, let me just clarify one thing because I think uh, um, uh, I think it's also important. We had some customers that also use Loom in a different manner. They prefer to send like uh, custom checks as an input to Loom. Let's say you have an infrastructure monitoring tool, whether it's, uh, I don't know, CA Nimsoft or whatever other tool, Datadog. You can send us alerts and events from these, soft, from these tools and we take them and we treat them as signals and when something, as, when, when alert like this is entered into the software, Loom go and fetch all the relevant anomalies from the log line that occurring on the same time, and it will correlate the health checks or the thresholds along with the log lines that were anomalous on the same time. So you get the full context of what's happening in your metrics coupled with what's happening with your logs. Um, I hope it answered the question. Okay. All right. Great. Um, I do uh, just want to let you guys know we uh, we still have some questions in here, but I do uh, also want to let folks know that there's still time. If you have a question for Dror, please feel free to use that uh, that that control panel. Get your question in, and we'll we'll take a look at it. The next question: uh, In a real world live e-commerce environment, what kind of timeline have you achieved in getting such a system up and running? And then also, do you have any real-world case studies where this has been implemented and the before and after results? Cool. Okay. Great stuff. So, uh, customers, uh, e-commerce e companies, and that use Loom and also telcos really usually figure out uh, the value pretty fast because they are data-driven companies. They used to be. They used to be. Uh, they, they're really a custom of of using uh, cutting edge technology for the daily uh, job. And we, we do have customers uh, that coming from that space. And the, 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 to answer the question, uh, we usually provide them with a uh, two weeks free trial for our SaaS version of our, of, uh, for our SaaS version. And during this two weeks of running, we focus on specific applications they'd like to monitor. And we can promise to deliver during the first two weeks it's all the value that you need in order to experience uh, the system in action. Now, after the trial is over and you see the results, when you want to get a full, uh, you want to uh, have a full production, um, sorry, full scale deployment to cover all the different applications, it might take around um, around a month. It really depends. I can give you a, a better answer without understanding how many applications are we talking about. But after a month of Sending all the, the the data and the installation will be over after the first few days, and then it's just baseline creation based on the software. You don't do any, you don't need to do anything about except waiting. And okay. you see the results of the first few days. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Next question: How is Loom different than APM? We'll be able to improve the NTTR by 45%, which almost is twice as fast as you do today. Uh, the other KPI that we able to, we can help with is what we, we, we call it becoming proactive. And using Loom, we'll be able to show you that you've become about four times more proactive about your customer's problem than what you used to do today. And we're asking you before starting, what's your NTTR today? How proactive are you? How many incidents do you have that are customer facing that you heard about? initially from a customer rather from your monitoring tools and then we can revisit these numbers after the implementation period uh, and the last kpi is actually reduction of noise because well alerting is about being relevant not to flood you with an uh, endless of alerts so loom is able to reduce the number the noise by 93 percent so by correlating incidents and by using other than mechanisms that we don't have enough time to cover today we're able to show you only uh, uh, a given number of incidents per day that we think you can capable of working with. It's not about another solution that will generate a uh, thousand of alerts per day. It's about dozens of alerts per day uh, per user, which is something that every organization can, focus, can, can work with. 
So it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality then. Through that. Okay, all right, great. So we have another question here. How is Loom different uh, from, or how is it different from APM? All right, all right. So APM are great, and to be honest, the big, the, the, the bigger enterprises that we're working with in the state usually have APM in place, and they still want to use Loom alongside with these APMs. And let me give you an example. The APMs are great for instrumenting. They, they're not using logs usually. So they instrumenting the application, providing you with great visibility into what's going on in the application level, and a really in-depth view into this application. However, they're limited by, by the they limited uh, by the visibility they can provide you. So they will, you will be able to see what's going on in the app, but if your app is also dependent on the network and the, the API that you cannot instrument, then you have blind spots all over the place. So what they do is we can, so Loom is able to detect issues that they weren't aware of, not in terms of the user experience maybe, but in terms of the dependencies between the different applications. So for any com in any complex IT environment, we usually have uh, cross-dependencies between apps and middleware, and we have different teams operating these systems. And the hardest thing of all is to perform root cause analysis all across your stack. So when something is not working, let's say you have uh, an application issue, well, user transactions are failing and you're losing money. Um, and on the same time, maybe something happening in your network. So we, 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 we many times see that there's a, what we call a circle of blame where the application teams blame the infrastructure guys and they say, no, it's not us, it's the integration team. And one team can be in India and the other team can be in the, in the state itself. And it's a really hard diagnosis process. So by detecting issues all across the stack, first you gain maximum visibility. And second, you, the correlation mechanism helps you perform root cause, which is only based on logs. So that, to answer briefly, Loom consists, Loom, Loom injects logs, not instrumenting your application. So it's less intrusive, provide you with a root cause because logs are the richest source of information. So if you constantly listen to your logs, we can promise you that you will become A, more proactive, and B, the overall health of your organization will be higher. That's, we call this the, the mean time between failures, not the mean time to resolution. And that's a beautiful KPI you would like to monitor. All right. I hope Great. That yeah, I'm sure it did. Um, so, uh, last call for questions. Um, we have, I think, one one more question out there. But uh, if uh, you do have a question for Drawer, uh, please go ahead and get it in now, and we'll um, uh, be sure to ask it. Okay. Next question: Is there a recommended implementation approach, including the manpower and skills needed uh, for initial setup and ongoing monitoring or tuning? Well, there is. We have what we do usually uh, in the scope phase after seeing a demo with the different teams. We have a customer success team that maps the scope of the project for the evaluation phase. The evaluation phase doesn't require more than one person uh, to see the results themselves. Uh, and we always focus on several applications and their collateral uh, during these first two weeks. Uh, and there's not, at the, uh, well, we usually say there's not, you don't need uh, so much skill in order to use Loom. It's pretty much straightforward a solution. And with the couple with the insight mechanism, uh, your users can be uh, less savvy. They don't have to be dependent on the application theory because the insights help them figure out what to do with the issue and its resolution. So um, the, skills, the skill is, uh, we're quite proud of saying that you'll be able to use Loom with your existing skill, uh, skill, uh, skills, sorry, and you don't have to have a, a, the most experienced guy in the neighborhood to use our solution. So after the evaluation period, we usually have um, a, a meeting to discuss the type of environment that you have and how many servers, how many instances, how many applications you would like to monitor. And we'll help you uh, articulate the, the deployment step by step. And we have some numbers to help you with. Uh, we can share it with you offline if you want how many time it takes, and what the resources you should prepare on your end. But uh, again, we're, re we're trying to be efficient as possible. We never had the resources to support like uh, very long um, deployments. We are, we, are, we are about showing you maximum value in the shortest amount of time possible. 
All right, great. We've gotten a couple more questions in, which is a great thing. Um, the next question is, does Loom go into an enterprise as an add-on to existing systems such as Splunk, or is this targeted as a replacement for log aggregation and analysis systems like Splunk? Mm -hmm. Okay, great one. Uh, so Loom is, well, with, well, Loom is positioned as an AI ops solution based on Gartner definition. We tend to look at ourselves as an intelligence layer on top of your existing log management tools, if you have any. So if you have your Splunk, well, most of our users do have Splunk today because we're focusing on medium and large enterprises. So the fact that they have Splunk doesn't uh, prevent us from showing them value because there are actually two use cases that are very, very uh, uh, common. Either they have Splunk, but they don't cover all the applications in their Splunk and they want to use Loom on the rest of the applications because in terms of total cost of ownership, Loom is much more affordable and easy to use and implement. So uh, it, can, it, can use, it can be your log management tool with the intelligence layer since we have the analytics screen that I've shown you before. So you can use it as a log management. And if you do have a log, if you're satisfied with your Splunk deployment, it's great. You can use Loom as the offense while Splunk as a defense. So that's a very common scenario as well. We have customers uh, discovering meaningful incidents proactively with Loom and performing the triage within their Splunk uh, 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 installation. So it's about the way you want to use it. With Splunk or without depends on you. However, we do not position ourselves as a log management tool. There are so many log management tools out there that, and all are great. If you're just looking for log management tools, there are many good solutions for that. If you're looking for the next gen log management tool, if you're looking for an AI ops, AI ops platform that consists of logs but also comes with proactive alerts to help you monitor your business in a proactive manner, the Loom is the solution for you. All right, great. Okay, um, I think we're down to our last question here, and it's a good one. How does somebody get a trial or a demo? Oh, very easy. Just drop us a note in the website and we'll, we'll take you through our demo. We have a, it's a, it's a thing we're doing all the time. You see a demo in our, uh, uh, with us on the line with our customer success team, and then you get an evaluation period of two weeks. We're just scoping the project for you. You get it for free. We define the KPIs for you, and uh, we'll let you play with the software. And the cool thing is that we don't ask anything, out, just, uh, but the moment you use it in the, in the evaluation period, you don't have to do anything but point the data towards our software. And over the first week, we usually schedule uh, uh, some call with you to share the results on your data without having you to tell us what's interesting and what's not. So it's kind of a, it's kind of just point us the log, see the value for yourself for free, and drop us an note. We'll take care of you. All right, great. Well. Um, thank you to everybody who uh, submitted questions. If you think of a question uh, after this webinar and you'd like to get some information, I'm, I'm sure you just log on to um, the Loom Systems website and there's a, uh, an email address there that you could direct any questions to. Um, Dror, thank you very much for walking us through um, this great presentation. I, I certainly was uh, got, got a ton out of it and I'm sure our audience did as well. So thanks very much. Um, also, uh, want to remind the audience that um, to check DevOps.com for future webinars, and also um, we will, as I said at the top of the hour, we will have a um, recorded version of this webinar on demand, probably in about ooh, 24 hours or so. So, um, thank you so much, Arlene. Thank you, Dror, and I hope everybody has a great day. My name is Charlene O'Hanlon, the moderator for today's event, and I am signing off. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.